Oh, hey, didn't see you there. My name's Josh Vinson, and I did a science experiment to find out how salty the sea would have to be for an egg to float. Now, I hypothesized that one half a cup of tap water and one half a cup of salt water would be a sufficient amount of salt for the egg to float. So, what I did is I went ahead and went to the procedure. The first thing you gotta do is label five eggs, one through five, like this. Then you gotta add five cups of water to this here pitcher. I've already added four, so this will be the fifth. Then you have to add one cup of salt to the five cups of water. Doing so will create a stock solution, allowing us to not only test if an egg will float in a salt, salty cup, also it will allow us to maintain an amount of salt in each cup, thus narrowing the least amount of salt needed. Now, as you can see, we have different various dilutions in each of the cups to represent different amounts of salt in each cup. For example, cup one has no salt water but one full cup of tap water. Cup two has one fourth a cup of salt water and three fourths a cup of tap water. Cup three has a half a cup of each. Cup four has three fourths a cup of salt water, one fourth a cup of tap water. And cup five has one complete cup of salt water. These different dilutions will help us narrow down the exact amount of salt needed for each egg to flow. So, let's get started. Let's try cup one. It's a no-go. The cup doesn't, the egg doesn't float. Cup two. The egg does not float. Cup three. It appears the egg does float. Cup four. The egg floats as well. Cup five the egg floats. Now, judging from what we've seen, it appears that in between the dilutions of three-fourths a cup of water, one-fourth a cup of salt water, and one-half a cup of each, it appears the egg will float and the egg won't float. So, this being said, we'll need to further dilute to find out more. One is two-thirds a cup of tap water and one-third a cup of salt water. And here what we have in cup two is two-fifths a cup of salt water and then three-fifths a cup of tap water. So, let's see if the eggs float. Cup one, one-third a cup of salt water, two-thirds tap water. The egg does not float. Cup two, two-fifths a cup of salt water, three-fifths a cup of tap water. The egg does float. So, in conclusion, at least two-fifths of salt water, a two-fifths a cup of salt water is required for an egg to float. As you can see, one cup of tap water did not have near enough amount of salt water for the egg to float, so it didn't. Also, one-fourth a cup of salt water wasn't enough for the egg to float either. But once we reached one half a cup of salt water, the egg was able to float. Then once we narrowed it down with the stock solution, we discovered that one third a cup of salt water was not enough for the egg to float, but two fifths a cup of salt water was. Thus concluding that two fifths of a cup of salt water is the minimum amount required for an egg to float. Now you may be saying, Josh, eggs floating in salt water has no relativity to our real life scenarios and our real life things we come across with every day. And I say, shut up, you're an idiot. Yes, it does. Eggs floating in salt water. An egg weighs less than a pound, yet it can't even float in salt water while we have cruise ships that weigh 30,000 tons floating every day. So I ask you, good sir, when I compare the relative density of an egg compared to the density of a giant cruise ship, you can't tell me that this isn't the same science. Density is applied in our everyday lives. Floating, this is the same science that let us float in water. Who says we can or can't float? This egg was just the starting point, and this is why we can have cruise ships and float in water. Thank you.